with photography now being so easy and immediate, it's not surprising that we often draw from photos. We take them, we load them, we print them off. But photos do have what can sometimes be a very hidden drawback, which can greatly impact our drawing. And it's not so obvious in photos such as these, but if we want to draw things such as this, or more particularly this, and especially things like this, it's really important to realize the shortcoming that photos have. Because when we draw, we're able to put back into our drawing what the photo hasn't been able to capture very well at all. Let me show you. In a moment, I'm going to draw this scene and I'm going to attempt to put back into my drawing what the camera removed from this image. But I want to compare it now to a video taken of the same location because I want to compare the video with this still image to show what happens with the photo when all of the depth, all of the sense of three dimensionality is taken out or at the very least compressed into a very shallow plane. Because when I view this in life, I'm looking at it through two eyes that are in slightly different viewing positions. And my brain combines these two slightly different images to create 3D. But a camera is a single lens. And because it therefore captures all of the image from a single viewpoint, it can't create the sense of depth that we're used to seeing. So when we look at a scene such as this, it's very tangled and very shallow, and it can be very hard to make out what's what. I don't know if you've ever had the experience of taking photos, planning to draw them, yet getting home and being really underwhelmed by how the photos look, particularly in the natural environment. And usually it's because the wonderful sense of three dimensions of layer upon layer upon layer has been totally lost and flattened out. It can also make it actually hard to tell what's closer and what's further away. While there are some obvious objects that are closer, once we go beyond that, it can be difficult to work out. Let's have a look at the video and just see the difference that three dimensions makes. Here's the same scene, but with the video camera moving slowly past this first tree. And look at how much more interesting, how much more compelling, how much more this would be a great scene to draw. We have now with movement and the sense of depth, we can see the closer objects, the mid-ground trees further back and the far gorge. And if we come back to our still image, how disappointing and flat and lifeless in comparison it is. And quite frankly, how confusing now the scene is. If we were thinking it was going to be great to draw with all these objects moving back one after the other, now we just have this tangle of form and tone and it's quite difficult except in a few obvious instances to make out what's happening where. Let's have one more look at the video, both for comparison, but can I suggest that at some point you pause the video and just see how instantly the scene goes from one of wonderful three-dimensionality to a very lifeless two-dimensional comparison because it's the difference from one with the other that we need to put back into our drawing when we do it. We need to capture what inspired us in the scene when we were there in life. And I have a few technique tips that I'll explain while you watch me draw this scene after that. So have another look and don't mind me, pause a couple of times and just see the difference. And can I suggest that when you pause it, you then take your eyes to a different part of the scene to what you were looking at when you paused it, because that will give you a better sense of suddenly how flat it becomes. The three tools I use most in trying to create a sense of depth in a scene, and particularly in a tangled scene of detail such as this, a weight of line, so basically how thick my line is, and so for that reason, I use a variety of nib widths, and in this scene, I'm going from 0 0.5 to 0 0.3 to 0 0.2 and to 0 0.1 millimeter nibs. I also use detail, the amount of detail that I draw, the amount of detail that I capture 
to also indicate depth because just naturally we see more detail in things that are closer. And so I like to try and replicate this and this creates a sense of realism. Often it's drawing less than we can still actually see that somehow makes the scene look more real for how we see it and the way our brain processes that in real life. And then I also like to use separation and this is by manipulating either tonal values or the actual line lengths to create breaks between lines, between objects, between tone. And this just gives the brain, if you like, processing room. It helps create a little bit of separation. The way in a theatre production there may be backdrops that, that stagger back from each other. And there's a sense of each, each plane of depth being a bit different. So with this scene, I've used my 0 0.5 to do just this very front foreground tree and these bits of foliage of small shrubs down the front. And now I've switched to a 0 0.3 millimeter pen for the next closest objects. So we have a, a couple of trees and we also have a fair bit of foliage on the right hand side. Now it's this right hand foliage which is the most complex. I leave it till last to give me a chance just to warm up as much as is going to happen. Now notice that I resist as much as possible just drawing branches across other branches even though the branches are quite thin and I could probably get away with it because it also creates a very flattening effect to do that. When I stop a branch and put it behind another branch with a very slight gap between the lines, at least sometimes, it really does give a sense of this is forward, this is behind. And particularly if I'm using the same weight of line, it's a very good way to reinforce that something is in front of something else and that of course is what depth is all about. Now darker, stronger tonal values also come forward and lighter tonal values tend to sit back even if they're representing in life the same, if you like, darkness or lightness for that matter. So I'm also trying to establish though some, some values here, some darker values because they also help give separation and they will help pop forward some things. So particularly these tree trunks, I try and get some dark tonal values up alongside of them to help them sit forward to really establish where they are in the plane. And of course having branches that come in front of the trunks at some point also establishes that very strongly. But to do that, we need to plan ahead before we put pen on paper. There's a lot more careful observation of how much of this tree can I draw before a branch comes in front of it. Not for this main tree, just up and down, but for every other tree besides that, I have to look and see now which tree is closer and which branch is closer, because the closest branches don't necessarily come from the closest trees. Now, there are some uh, shrubs in the, in the mid-ground, sort of just right of centre, and they're quite dark. They're, it's actually a shrub, a bush that's in, um, in shade, and so, or in shadow, it's, it's overshadowed this one. And so it's, it's quite dark, and so I, I, again I want to capture that because that, that will give a nice definition of a, of a plane of depth at that point running across our, our scene. And that's going to establish my, my mid-ground quite nicely I think. And again with the foreground we, we show more detail so I am drawing individual leaves here in these shrubs that are along the very front and I'm going to have to come in around them putting some, some dark, very dark hatch in and so I hope they still stand out because they are very small and I don't want to make them too large because that will change the scale of the bush that I'm drawing. And now I've switched to a 0.2 millimeter pen for these trees that sit behind this bush. And even though they're all behind the bush, they're also at different lengths. And so they're all at different distances going back. And so I am trying to draw them uh, in order of their closeness and to show a little lighter touch and to have a little lighter touch as I draw the further ones. 
And again, I'm trying to show branches that cross other branches. But once we get this far back, it's not quite as important, particularly if the lines are all being drawn fairly lightly. But there is a tangle and I'm going to have to simplify. But being this far back, it's quite natural to simplify the detail and it works quite well because detail tends to come forward and we don't want these branches at the distance to come forward. Now, I'm putting in some more, if you like, further back mid-ground on the left-hand side there, and I'm really just providing some hatch lines to represent the value of the bushes that are there, the, the large shrubby bushes that are there. And now, I've switched to my 0 0.1 to do this branch, this tree that sits further back again with this group of further back trees. So basically, as I go further back in distance from the front, I'm switching to lighter and lighter weight lines. And I'm also drawing these things with less and less detail. And I'm simplifying my marks and keeping them looser as well. I'm giving them, if you like, a more casual look the further back they go. And, and with a 0 0.1, I did a very light uh, representation of the gorge, on, well, on the other side of the gorge, there's actually a creek that runs between me and the far hill that we see. So now I've got more detail on this right-hand side. I did deliberately leave this because it's the biggest tangle of all. And it's partly not as important because there is such a strong focal point with this central tree. And the way I've drawn it, this central tree does stand out. And then you've also got the trees to the right and left of that. And so in some ways, this right-hand side is, is a bit of a counterbalance of more value and line, but not so much form. And in life, it's difficult to make out what's what in the reference, and it's much more easy in the video, but it's still a bit of an effort, even in the video, to work out what's what. And so this was always going to be a bit of a challenge, and it was always going to be drawn as much by trying to capture the tonal values of the parts of the, the branches and the leaves that are in shadow, and then use negative space for the ones that are captured in light. And then overall, I stand back for moments and look at this and just think, is there greater darkness needed in parts? Have I got an overall balance of light and dark? But what I don't want to do is at this point is to overwhelm my lines with lots of, if you like, not very well thought out lines that close in all the gaps and equalize all the values and, and so forth. So I need restraint at this stage because we can lose a lot of the whiteness and a lot of the separation between objects and between planes very quickly if we're not careful. So I realise I wasn't very straight along the bottom here, so I'm just making some extra additions um, at this point to square off, if you like, the bottom of my drawing. I was planning to draw it equal size. I made it a little bit larger in the end, but that did give me more space. The Australian bush is, I think, a particularly difficult tangle of, of nature to draw, but here it is. So when we're drawing from a photo, the very first thing I think we should do is to be suspicious, to ask ourselves, what is the photo not letting me see that's in this scene in life? Or what's it not letting me see as clearly as I would see it, as I would feel it, if I were actually there? And it doesn't matter whether it's a wilderness scene or where there's no wilderness to be seen at all. When we're drawing from a photo, we need to have a little work, a little effort to work out just what is the three-dimensionality that we've lost from our reference that we might put back or put back to some degree by using some of the techniques which as an artist producing a drawing are available to us. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. But of course, whether you draw from a photo or whether you draw from life, whatever you're drawing, however you're drawing it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.